We used advanced AI models to create two intellectual thinkers, and we put them in a face-to-face -face debate to answer one of the most mysterious questions about our universe. Do aliens exist? As always, we will have six different AI models listening to the debate and scoring each argument. That being said, the debate begins now. Do aliens really exist out in the universe? Sure thing. Aliens exist. Have you ever gazed at the night sky? Noticed how each star could host a planet like ours? Ever pondered on how life sprouted in the harshest conditions on Earth? Now let's assume for a moment that our planet is nothing special, just one of countless others that could harbor life. Wouldn't it be arrogant to think we're alone in this vast universe? I believe that life finds a way, even in the most unforgiving environments. Think about extremophiles, those tiny organisms thriving in deep sea vents and boiling hot springs right here on Earth. If life can exist there, why not on some distant exoplanet orbiting a far-off star? Regarding your point about life sprouting in the harshest conditions on Earth, did you know that those conditions are still within the range of what we consider life-sustaining? Sure, extremophiles live in extreme conditions, but they're still bound by the limits of physics and biology we understand. You're overlooking the fact that these limits may not exist on other planets. Can you show me an organism that thrives without water or in temperatures close to absolute zero? I believe that if aliens existed, we would have solid proof by now. But all we have are speculations and assumptions. It's like seeing a chessboard and assuming it has always been set up for a game. Just because the pieces are there doesn't mean they've always been arranged in a particular order. Let me challenge that assumption about life as we know it. You say life must adhere to the rules we understand, but isn't that a narrow view? It's like saying the only real game is chess because that's the only one you've played. What about checkers? Poker? Life on other planets might not look like anything we can comprehend, but that doesn't make it any less real. And just because we don't have solid proof yet doesn't mean we never will. Remember, absence of proof is not proof of absence. Think about this. We once believed the Earth was flat because that's all we could perceive. Our understanding evolved and so must our search for alien life. Your argument assumes that just because we don't have solid proof yet, it doesn't mean we never will. But isn't that just wishful thinking? Extraordinary claims need extraordinary evidence. Take the flat Earth example you gave. The belief that the Earth was flat was replaced when evidence proved it was round. It wasn't a matter of waiting for the proof. The proof was there, waiting to be discovered. In the case of alien life, we've been searching for decades with ever-improving technology and yet have found nothing. If you lose something in your house, you search for it, right? And if you've looked everywhere and still haven't found it, wouldn't you start to believe it's not there? I believe we haven't found aliens because they aren't there. Science should deal with facts, not hope. You're conflating absence of evidence with evidence of absence. Look, your house, it's a finite space. You lose your keys, you turn the place upside down, and if you don't find them, sure, they're probably not there. But the universe, it's not a house. It's vast, ever-expanding. We've barely begun to explore our own solar system, let alone the billions of galaxies out there. And about your point on science dealing with facts, I agree. But science also thrives on curiosity, on the pursuit of the unknown. Imagine if Galileo gave up his search because he didn't find anything initially. Our understanding of the universe would be so limited. So yes, we haven't found aliens yet. But that doesn't mean they aren't there, it just means we need to keep looking. Your claim hinges on the idea that because the universe is vast and ever-expanding, we need to keep looking for life elsewhere. I believe that Earth might actually be rare or unique. It's true we've barely begun to explore our solar system, let alone the billions of galaxies out there. But does size really matter here? I mean, how big do you think the universe should be for life to exist elsewhere? And how much of it should we explore before we accept that maybe we are alone? You're right. Science thrives on curiosity, but it also thrives on evidence. And so far, the evidence suggests that we are the first or only intelligent species. The Fermi paradox shows this. If there are a multitude of technologically advanced civilizations in the galaxy, then why haven't we detected any signs of them? Your position is unsustainable given the Fermi paradox. It's like saying you've been to a city, didn't see any kids, and so you conclude there are no kids in that city. 
Does that sound logical? I don't think so. Just because we haven't detected signs of aliens doesn't mean they aren't there. It could simply mean our technology is too primitive to detect them. You ask how big the universe should be for life to exist elsewhere? Well, consider this. There are more stars in the universe than grains of sand on all the beaches on Earth. Even if life happens on one in a billion planets around those stars, there would still be billions of planets with life. And about being alone? Thinking we're alone in this vast universe is not just arrogant, but statistically unlikely. Your stance ignores the fact that extraordinary claims need extraordinary evidence. Sure, there are more stars in the universe than grains of sand on all the beaches on Earth. But just because there's a high number of stars, it doesn't automatically mean there's life out there. It's like saying every grain of sand could be a diamond. Sounds amazing, but it's not true, is it? The conditions for life as we know it are incredibly specific and rare. I believe that life needs a perfect set of conditions to exist. And about UFO sightings, can we trust them? UFOs are just that, unidentified flying objects. It doesn't mean they're extraterrestrial. They could be man-made or natural phenomena. Alien believers often jump to conclusions without proof. And why do we think aliens look the way we think they look anyway? Isn't it mostly influenced by pop culture rather than hard scientific evidence? You've dodged the core issue, our definition of life. You're right, extraordinary claims need extraordinary evidence. But who's to say what's extraordinary? Is it not extraordinary that life exists at all, even here on Earth, in extreme environments? And about UFO sightings, sure, they could be man-made or natural phenomena. But isn't it also possible they could be something more? Something we can't yet explain? And the way we imagine aliens, yes, it's influenced by pop culture. But that doesn't negate their existence. It just shows our limited understanding. Remember, we once believed the Earth was the center of the universe. Our perceptions change as we learn more. So why limit our search based on what we know now? Why not keep exploring, keep questioning? Isn't that what science is all about? Your argument collapses when you suggest that just because we can't yet explain something, it could be something more. That's not how science works. Science is based on evidence and facts, not on what we can't explain. Sure, life exists here on Earth in extreme environments, but that's still life as we know it, based on our understanding of biology and physics. I believe that most alien theories rely on imagination, not data. As for UFOs, yes, they could be something more. But until we have solid proof, isn't it more logical to assume they're man-made or natural phenomena? And about everyone having access to a high-quality camera yet no clear footage of aliens? Isn't that telling? If there were aliens visiting us, don't you think we'd have concrete evidence by now? We need evidence, not stories. Your argument is like saying every shadow in the dark could be a ghost. Our You've provided zero proof for your claim that most alien theories rely on imagination, not data. Sure, science is based on evidence and facts, but it also encourages us to explore the unknown, to push beyond our current understanding. As for UFOs, remember that unidentified doesn't automatically mean non-alien. It simply means we don't know yet. And isn't the pursuit of knowledge what science is all about? As for clear footage of aliens, think about this. If an ant sees a hospital, would it understand what it's looking at? If everyone's walking around with a high-def camera, why haven't we caught aliens on film? Maybe we already have, but every odd clip is instantly considered a fake clip before we really investigate. Also, I believe that just because we haven't found concrete evidence yet doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It just means we need to keep exploring, keep questioning. Isn't that the essence of science? That's a false equivalent since you're comparing the exploration of the unknown in science with the belief in aliens. Exploration is based on following evidence wherever it leads, not making assumptions in the absence of it. And your argument about ants and hospitals? It's imaginative, but isn't that what I've been saying? That most alien theories rely on imagination, not data. You say maybe we've seen aliens, but our understanding is too limited to recognize them. But isn't that just a hypothesis without any proof? I believe that if aliens existed, we would have solid proof by now. And about life on Earth in extreme places, yes, it can help us guess what alien life might be like, if there was any. All life on Earth, 
no matter how extreme, shares common characteristics. Until we find life that breaks these rules, it's only logical to assume that they apply universally. As for the time and money spent on space exploration, I believe it's worth it, because it advances our scientific knowledge. Your logic contradicts itself. You say exploration is following evidence, but then dismiss the possibility of alien life because we haven't found solid proof yet. Aren't we exploring the unknown, gathering data to support or refute our hypotheses? And about the ant hospital analogy, it's not just imagination. It's a logical assertion that our understanding is limited by our perspective. Just as an ant might fail to comprehend a hospital, we might fail to recognize alien life even if we've encountered it. And your point about all life on Earth sharing common characteristics, isn't that precisely because they all evolved on the same planet, under the same conditions? Who's to say life on a distant exoplanet, evolving under different conditions, would share those same characteristics? I believe that thinking we're alone in this vast universe is not just arrogant, but statistically unlikely. Isn't it more logical to assume that Earth isn't special, but just one of many life-friendly planets? Your argument assumes that because we're exploring the unknown, we must therefore accept the possibility of alien life. But exploration doesn't mean accepting every hypothesis as equally likely. It means following the evidence. And so far, the evidence does not support the existence of aliens. Regarding your point about life on Earth sharing common characteristics because they evolved on the same planet, I agree. But that's exactly why I believe that life needs a perfect set of conditions to exist. Different conditions could very well lead to different outcomes. However, until we have evidence of life that breaks the rules we know, it's only logical to assume those rules apply universally. Regarding your claim that Earth might not be special, let me ask you this. Has space exploration shown any signs of life so far? I believe that if aliens existed, we would have solid proof by now. Until then, all we have are theories and assumptions. Your evidence fails to consider the vastness of the universe and the limitations of our technology. Sure, we've not found signs of life so far, but have we explored enough? It's like saying you've read one page of a book and claim to know the entire story. As for your belief that life needs a perfect set of conditions to exist, remember extremophiles. They thrive in conditions we once thought impossible for life. So who's to say alien life can't exist in conditions we deem inhospitable? I believe that our narrow definition of life blinds us to what's out there. And about space exploration being worth it? Well, isn't knowledge its own reward? Plus, who knows what other discoveries we might stumble upon while looking for aliens? Maybe they're watching us right now like we watch animals in a zoo. Ever thought about that? You're overlooking the fact that our search for life isn't based on a narrow definition, but on what we know is essential for life to exist. Sure, extremophiles live in conditions we once thought impossible, but they still need water and energy sources, right? I believe that life needs a perfect set of conditions to exist. As for your suggestion that aliens might be watching us like we watch animals in a zoo, isn't that just speculation? It's like saying there could be a teapot orbiting the sun between Earth and Mars, but we just haven't seen it yet. Could be, but without evidence, it's just an idea. And about the vastness of the universe and our limitations, what if we're just too early or too late to meet anyone? Maybe life did exist elsewhere but has since died out. Or maybe it hasn't evolved yet. Until we have evidence, all we can do is speculate. But I believe that if aliens existed, we would have solid proof by now. Your position is unsustainable given the scale of our universe and the diversity of life on Earth. Sure, extremophiles need water and energy sources. But who's to say alien life would need the same? That's like saying all animals should breathe oxygen because humans do. As for your teapot analogy, it's flawed because a teapot is a man-made object, unlike life which we know can arise naturally. Now, about being too early or too late to meet aliens, it's possible. But isn't it also possible that we're just not listening, right? Maybe aliens are using a form of communication we haven't discovered yet. Maybe they're so different from us that we can't even recognize them. Remember, absence of proof is not proof of absence. I believe that if we keep exploring and keep an open mind, one day we'll find the proof you're asking for. That's a weak rebuttal because it assumes that life as we don't know it could exist. 
It's true, all animals on Earth breathe oxygen because they evolved under conditions where oxygen is available. Similarly, I believe that life needs a perfect set of conditions to exist. Alien life would need some form of energy source, right? And about your point that maybe we're not listening right or we can't recognize aliens because they're so different from us, isn't that just speculation? It's like saying there could be invisible creatures around us that we can't see or touch. Could be, but without evidence, it's just an idea. As for what it would mean for religion or philosophy if aliens exist, I think it would challenge a lot of our beliefs. But until we have evidence of aliens, that's a discussion for another time. Ultimately, I believe that if aliens existed, we would have solid proof by now. Your evidence fails to consider that our definition of life might be too narrow. You say alien life would need some form of energy source, right? But who's to say it would need the same source as we do? We know life on Earth can exist in extreme conditions, right? So isn't it possible that life elsewhere could exist under different conditions? As for your point about invisible creatures, it's not just an idea. Science has already discovered creatures that are invisible to the naked eye, like bacteria. So why not aliens that are invisible to our current technology? And you're right, the existence of aliens would challenge many of our beliefs. But isn't that what discovery is all about? Challenging our preconceptions and expanding our understanding? As for your belief that if aliens existed, we would have solid proof by now. Let me ask you this. Could most alien life be underwater or underground, never sending signals? Our search for alien life has focused mainly on planets similar to ours. But maybe we're looking in the wrong places. Maybe the evidence is out there, waiting to be discovered. Your claim hinges on the idea that our definition of life might be too narrow and that life elsewhere could exist under different conditions. This argument collapses when we consider that we have not yet found a single form of life that exists outside the known conditions. The fact that bacteria are invisible to the naked eye does not support your argument about aliens being invisible to our current technology. Bacteria may be invisible, but they're still detectable because they exist within the parameters of what we understand as life. I believe that most alien theories rely on imagination, not data. Your suggestion that most alien life could be underwater or underground and never sending signals is another speculation without evidence. It's like saying there could be dragons living in unexplored caves, but we just haven't found them yet. Theories are good, but without evidence, they remain just that. Theories. I believe that if aliens existed, we would have solid proof by now. Until then, all we have are assumptions and speculations, not facts. And in science, facts trump speculations every time. That was a fascinating debate. The pro-alien side won by quite a margin. Let's take a look at some statistics. What do you guys think? Do aliens exist? It's sure that this is a difficult subject. And those are actually the subjects we like to talk about on our channel. So make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out.